I think it's going to be tough for the dollar this week. We would look for an extension of the losses uh, that we saw sparked by the FOMC. I think that dovishness um, is going to push back further any potential reemergence of the divergence trade. Uh, and I think that means the dollar is going to lose ground against a range of currencies. Commodity currencies? Uh, the commodity yeah. currencies, I think, are very well positioned. Because if we look at currencies like uh, Australia, we've seen rebounds in the rate expectations. We've seen rises in terms of commodity prices. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that makes the water safe uh, for Aussie buying at this point. I think if the dollar downtrend extends, that we could see a move as far as 80 cents. Well, I don't think we're going to get any pushback from the RBA against that move. What I'm trying to figure out is over the last week or so, right, we've had a risk rally. But yen has gone up as well? What's going on there? I think that there's some cross currents for the yen. Uh, but part of what we're seeing is that there is probably incentive for a lot of corporates, uh, for a lot of uh, Japanese investors uh, to bring back some money approaching the fiscal year end. Uh, but I think as that turns, we have a risk rally. We have the potential that Japanese authorities are going to be more concerned with yen appreciation. Uh, and we have the likelihood that we will need to see these investors continue to make these underlying shifts in terms of their allocation in favor of foreign assets as we move into April, those forces combine for a lot of yen weakness. Would you short the dollar as well? Uh, well, I would say it's, <laughs> it's going to be down to the big question, thinking not just about this week, but this year, on exactly when we get confirmation from the FOMC that they're really done. Because they're such a slow-moving tanker, and they're very gradually moving away from as many hikes as they were previously signaling, but that's not the same thing as saying we're done. And I think that moment, or at least as we get closer to that moment, which is probably more like July, because they are so slow moving, they need the data to reinforce their views. Then I think you could see that the, the real uh, pressure forming for a, a serious amounts of, of dollar weakness. In the meantime, uh, it's a more dangerous point because they're moving so slowly. Mm -hmm. Policy divergence is still, is still hanging in there. And if you do suddenly get some particularly better than expected data, suddenly everyone can get taken out. And certainly lack of conviction is probably one of the biggest themes we've seen so far this year, given yeah. how messy the first few months were already were. So, so let me ask sort of a wonky question. If we go back a, a, a bit, uh, we had Super Mario coming out with his most aggressive uh, <laughs> easing ever, right? The day mm -hmm. after, China fixes the RMB, which uh, at that point, the strongest fixed uh, for, for this year. And it had people thinking maybe these guys are kind of in touch with each other. There's a bit of policy coordination going on. Uh, I, I think it, you think there is? I think that's an interesting question because if you look at the overall context of the policy uh, decisions that we've had since the G20 meeting, we have had stabilization in terms of China. We had the ECB balk on the forward guidance, uh, so uh, they didn't do everything they could uh, to weaken the euro. The BOJ uh, held pat, and then, of course, the Fed has been dovish. Uh, and to me, that looks a lot more like they reached an agreement uh, that some degree of dollar weakness was beneficial yeah. for global markets, for the global economy. Economy, then it does the opposite. I love conspiracy theories. What do you think, David? <laughs> well, I, I mean, the, the, the biggest thing of all affecting particularly markets out in Asia has been to get rid of this expected depreciation of the renminbi. And Central Bank Governor Joe Joshua has done an amazing job since Chinese New Year of doing that of just reinforcing that we're not pushing for a deval. It makes no sense. The cost would be far bigger than any potential benefits that we could see. And that alone was something that people were not so sure about. Pre-Chinese New Year, there was a lot of people out there fully convinced that we were talking to that there was going to be a huge mega devaluation. Mm -hmm. And that somehow, once they do that one big off move, the market would then expect appreciation because it overshot, which makes no sense to us on any form. So at least getting rid of that and then getting to the point where the Fed starts to sound, and obviously they can't rush to sounding too dovish, but once they get there, it could be in coordination. It does make sense. Certainly they've been talking about the strength of the dollar impacting their economy, and we actually are probably the most dovish on growth expectations in the U.S. this year. Anything will help, even the currency, for such a well, relatively closed economy. What are your expectations for growth? Oh, we're down at the low end of like 1% growth this wow. year. We think we're, we're seeing a, wow. a seriously weaker number uh, than, than before. And actually, it will mean that while the biggest growth contributor in the world will be China, number two won't be the U.S. this year. The second will actually be Asia X. China and Japan, and that has not happened in a while. What's going to take the U.S. down to 1% growth? Is wow. it an inventory overhang, or it, what are you talking about? It's partly about? inventories, and it's partly also consumer spending being that much weaker. Yeah. We saw it pick up so much last year. Auto sales hit 15-year highs. Uh, the housing market doing very well. All these things are overextended. The economic cycle, the expansion, mm -hmm. is pretty mature already. And so in our view, we're overdue a downturn. The only reason we're not calling for a recession is because growth was disappointing throughout the entire expansion. Mm -hmm. Every year, everyone always said three, three, three. And we actually got two.